Hi again, and we're continuing. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Kazakh bow making technology in this video. Um, what's very interesting about it is that uh, I personally, uh, to date, haven't found any information on how it was done directly uh, in terms of archaeology or, or depictions or uh, descriptions. All we know is that there are certain uh, remarks in the, in the dependable sources of contemporary authors, uh, Russian, European, and etc., um, travelers or geographers or, or officers, who said that uh, Kazakhs both import and make their own bows. So we know it took place. We know it was happening. But how, we don't know. Uh, we assume, because we know how it was made in Turkey, we know how it was made in Korea, in China, we assume that we did it pretty much the same way. But, uh, like I said, no direct evidence. So, as I was looking into it and trying to find at least some traces of information, and I got to tell you, it's like chasing a um, phantom. Uh, as you approach, it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, the, the closer you get, the further it gets from you. And finally, uh, I had this little moment of clarity uh, in a museum when I saw tools that are used in making uh, the yurts, Kazakh yurts. And uh, there is a whole section of them in the museum. And when I looked at them and compared them to uh, uh, the videos of bow making that I saw in Mongolia, Korea, Turkey, I realized that they're very, very similar, just maybe a little bit larger or even exactly the same. And so I started looking more carefully into uh, yurt making technology. And what do you know? Uh, they bend wood, heat bend wood. They kind of uh, treat it, cut it, carve it the same way a bower uh, would make it. And the, the, uh, the, the, the tools, the setup, the benches they used look very similar to bow making benches. So I assume that the technology was probably very, very close to yurt making. And that's kind of, uh, for me, uh, is an evidence, indirect evidence of uh, how it was made in Kazakhstan. And uh, I'm pretty confident that this is the right track because we know bows were made and we know a very similar technology was used to produce yurts. So, you know, you kind of add two and two and uh, you get a 99 to 100% certainty. And this is one of those, like I said, how you have to go about studying uh, Kazakh nomads because so little sources, so little information a lot of myths, a lot of uh, misconceptions, a lot of, uh, you know, historical, a lot of conclusions made by academ academian historic historics who never, uh, who never saw or, or tried or tested what they're talking about, uh, relying on some sort of uh, uncertain sources. So in other words, it's layer upon layer of misinformation, and we have to dig the uh, the, the, the truthful information, kind of like, uh, you know, we dig gold, uh, you know, these tiny speckles of gold in, in, in a mass of sand and dirt. And that's how we study uh, Kazakh archery. We have nothing, but we still have to do our job. And basically what they do, uh, I will be talking about how they make yurts because uh, I have some knowledge of that as well. Uh, it's kind of one of my uh, subspecialties as it happened. 
not a not the greatest expert but definitely uh, more than just average uh, knowledge on, on yurt making and um, they have these um, uh, they have these uh, what do I call them ovens or kilns uh, where they heat uh, where they heat wood and then they bend it and then they leave it in bent position using various very simple but very efficient uh, jigs and etc and you know when you look at it you understand that uh, if you use the same equipment scale it down just a little bit use thinner wood and you get your wood core easily and if you can get that then you know uh, carving uh, horn stripes and, and, and treating uh, uh, the, the sinew uh, wouldn't present any kind of challenge at all so pretty much I consider this a proof a definite proof of an existence of bow making technology among the Kazakhs if they can build yurts they could build uh, they could build bows that's for sure I have absolutely no doubt about it and uh, as far as for how it all went together I'm not gonna talk about it uh, because this process is described in many many videos in many books if you're interested in uh, bow making I think there are uh, Turkey manuscripts. I haven't read them, but I've heard about them. My personal favorite is uh, Adam Karpovich. I think for me, this is an expert number one in bow making uh, manual writing because he he is so thorough, so in depth. Uh, he he's an engineer, and it shows. He's just so particular, so uh, technical about it that, you know, no reason to. And, and he's talking about one of the most sophisticated bows, the Turkish bow. So if you, uh, if you get through his book, you, you, you'll have all the knowledge you need to start bow making or, or become knowledgeable on this subject. So I'm not going to repeat that. Uh, for me, it's important to know that, you know, my ancestors could and did the same. And, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for that. And uh, this is it for this section. Uh, there's a couple more left and this will be it for the series. So thank you. See you soon.